Can you talk about some of the vehicles you're deploying this on right now? Yeah, so we're testing it on Marine Corps' amphibious combat vehicle. We've already done track testing on Army Striker, on the MTV A1P2, which is like your standard troop carrier. Uh, We've also scaled it to other military vehicles um, that didn't make it as far as track testing because it was the first use cases. And then as we got through those use cases, the army and Marine Corps, like just let's more focus, let, let's focus more narrowly on where we need it now versus where we would like to have it later. Yeah. It makes sense. So, so they want to get it to production on a select number. of Right. That makes then, the biggest impact first. And then, you yeah, know. makes sense. Yep. So <laughs> what's that like from a maintenance perspective? Like, I mean, do you, what's your, what's your wear component on a sphere break? Yeah. So right now, I mean, you know, backing up, the main reason why we, uh, are, you know, the, the main reason why the Department of Defense is so interested in our technology, and, and uh, there are other civilian components to it too, but it's because we designed it to change brake pads without removing wheels or tools. So you can literally change a brake pad on the vehicle so with no infrastructure, with no infrastructure. So, d- so it climbs from the sides now, or how is how is the present? No, it's same thing. It's you know we have our uh, calipers that are concentric to the rotor, and there's pistons and everything in there. Um, when the pads wear out, you just pull a pin, and then you can uh, pull a spacer plate, which is the uh, curve of the rotor. So it yeah. takes that up. So if you have you know friction material on the inside of the rotor, yeah, it's not going to get caught between the piston and the rotor surface. Awesome. And you can pull it right out, and as you pull it out, the piston retracts. 